And then what I think is important is what, what can grandparents do? How can grandparents save safely for their children's, their grandchildren's college? And the, the good news here is grandparents can save as much as you want. They can put it in 529s or any other place they want, and it's not going to impact their the children's chances for financial aid at all. But when it will is when grandma or grandpa decides, okay, now it's time to help with college costs. We're going to pull money out of the 529 or out of our whatever account. Uh, that's when it can hurt a kid who is getting financial aid. Now, if grandparents are helping their, their grandchildren and the grandchild is getting no financial aid, yeah, they can help whenever they want. It doesn't matter, right? It's not going to influence their merit scholarships at all. It's only going to matter the timing of when grandparents help if their grandchildren are getting need-based aid. And if they are getting need-based aid, then what the smart grandparent will do will wait until the child has filed for his or her last financial aid application, which is typically in the spring, if, if the kids are getting out in four years, typically the spring of the uh, junior year of college. So once those are filed, whether it's the profile and the FAFSA or just the FAFSA, then the grandparents could take out the money and pay for the last year of school or pay off any uh, loans or do whatever they want to help with college costs because no one's ever going to ask again, hey, is, are the grandparents you know, helping with college costs? I should mention that when grandparents do, if grandparents would take the money out and the kids are still in the process of filing financial aid forms, that grandparent money is considered, uh, is treated like a child's income, and it's assessed at 50%. That's why it's very stiff, stiff. So it's best for grandparents to sit on the side until no more financial aid applications are filed. Okay. Uh, and then I should briefly say that the best student loan for those who do borrow is the Stafford loan. Um, these are the amounts that you can borrow. The reason why this is a safe loan, most kids can borrow up to $27,000. It's the kid's loan. The reason why I think it's safe is because there's a federal repayment plan. The latest is called Pay As You Earn. And a child can, if they graduate and they don't have a, you know, they don't have a job or they're underemployed, they can pay it back based essentially on what they make rather than what they owe. So it's kind of a no-brainer. If you just Google Pay As You Earn, you'll find out about that program. Um, and the last thing I want to um, talk about tonight is just another way to save for college is, or to, to spend less, is to make sure your kids get out in four years, right? Which everyone here is probably going, well, aren't they going to get out in four years? You'd be surprised how many kids do not get out in four years, uh, most of them. Uh, a great place to look at graduation rates is college completion, which is a, a microsite of the, the Chronicle of Higher Ed. You could find any graduation rate and compare school, different kinds of schools. It's a great little site. Um, here's just an example of Pomona, which has one of the most, the highest grad rates in the country, nine, almost 91%. Now, all the, these are all federal rates, and they're a little weird because the feds only count full-time freshmen, how many graduate in four, five, and six years. And so if a child, say, starts at Pomona and then transfers somewhere else, they're treated, Pomona is dinged, it, it will, they will treat it as that the child never graduated from Pomona. Mm -hmm. So if you have a school that a lot of kids leave, which of course isn't good, um, then their grad rate is going to look artificially lower for the kids who do stick it out. Okay? They also have it by break it out by, by gender and I think and ethnicity. Um, and here's Cal Poly. You can see, uh, oh, I should mention that uh, the average grad rate of private school for your school in this country is 52.5%. So Pomona's clearly way ahead of that. Uh, and here's Cal Poly. Uh, like a lot of Cal states, they have horrible four-year grad rates. Um, it's actually below the national level, which is for four-year state schools, the typical 31.3% of kids get out in four years. Um, and here's some grad rates of, of UCs. You can see a variety of, ranks of different grad rates. I think the top UCs, kids tend to get out in four years because they typically show up to even get into these schools. They need a year of AP credits. So they're all essentially sophomores when they start the school. Um, and then here's some more Cal State. And I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, it'll be cheap. We'll go to, a kid will go to a Cal State. But... You know, it won't be if you're sitting around in San Francisco for five or six years paying rent in San Francisco. And a lot of kids do 
drop out because they can't get their classes, and then those that, that want to you know, hang in there oftentimes have to spend their summers going to college, community college to get out in five years or six years. Uh, and then here's just some four-year grad rates. Um, you know, f private schools typically have higher grad rates, but not all of them. I mean, you can see like Chapman University is a very hot school right now in Southern California, University of San Francisco, University of Denver is very hot. It's like, okay, if I'm spending all that money, why are, I would ask the question, how come more kids aren't getting out in four years? I mean, you should ask the questions of what it takes to get out in four years. Is there an explanation for this, you know, for a very expensive school with mediocre grad rates? Um, and I think that's all I, yeah, that's all I have. <laughs> but um, I don't know, we have time for questions? We do. Okay, we have time, time for, for questions. questions. I have so much more information on my blog, The College Solution. I've been writing for this blog, it's a labor of love. I've been writing for thecollegesolution.com for like since 2008. And then I have my um, book, The College Solution, by the same name. And anybody okay. have any questions? questions? Well, you know, I tend to think I would prefer to start at the school and end there because one thing is you, you can lose ground if you start at a school and then transfer because your, all your credits won't transfer, right? A lot of times, you know, schools aren't very good about accepting each other's tr credits. So, I mean, there has been studies that you won't save any money doing that. I mean, at, at this, actually, in this state, most students start at community colleges. Um, one thing I will say about that, and, and the problem, no matter what your income is, even families with very high incomes, their kids who start at community colleges rarely ever get a bachelor's degree. I don't know, it's like a Bermuda hole of education. I don't know what it is. Um, but I would say that for students who do start at community colleges, which are most kids in the state, just because of the strange way the higher ed um, was designed in the 1960s uh, to funnel more kids, most kids to community college, which is very unusual. Most kids are not like that. Um, Kids who start at community colleges should practice for the placement tests because and take it as seriously as an SAT or ACT, which you don't have to do to get to a community college. But a lot of students are, start way behind, so they're you know, taking all these remedial classes and they get discouraged and they're not getting any credit, which is one reason why they never get out. If I've talked to community college officials in this state and they said they have studies that show if kids study before they get the placement test for English and math, they skip, you know, one or two remedial classes. So that could really help to get them on their way. I don't know if that answered your question. Well, most of the money is, the best deals are for freshmen. Um, because, one, because of U.S. News and World Report, they want to get the money that, to the kids who they think could help them and also fill those um, freshman slots. So money that you would get as a transfer student is usually not as good. Well, it's interesting to ask that because um, there's this great website, which I didn't have time to talk about today, called collegemeasures.com. And you can look on that uh, site. It was started by this um, head, former head statistician the university, or the Department of Ed, the feds. Um, and they have, you can compare schools in a whole state. You can use payscale.com figures, right, to look at what are the beginning salaries. Now, this isn't scientific, but it's all we have except for five states. And this is really exciting. College Measures has been encouraging states to develop databases, because they're fully capable of, of actually tracking what the beginning salaries are of of students who've just gotten out of college who stay in their state. So right now there are five states, and if your kids want to go into these states, you can go, go to collegemeasures.com, or it might be collegemeasures.org, one of the two, and you can click on it and you can see if your kid wants to go to school in Texas, uh, Virginia, Colorado, Tennessee, or Arkansas, you can go on there and find what the exact salaries are because it's linked to state databases that are linked to the unemployment records because the states have to know what people make in case they get unemployed. Okay. So the, what, what a lot of people, including myself, would like is for the feds to do this. Now, the federal government was prohibited from doing it 
um, Congress forbid them to do it starting in 2008 because a lot of private schools were lobbying against it. They didn't want people to know. Uh, but I think now there's a, the, this Higher Education Act is going to be renewed next year, and there's a bipartisan effort of Democrats and Republicans to change their ways and decide, hey, we really should get this information. But what's interesting, I have looked at, I've done some blogs on this topic of college measures, and I looked at recently, um, I went in Texas and I went to Colorado, and I looked at, one, in Colorado, okay, what are the, the schools that have the highest salaries in general? But you can even drill down to majors. So in Colorado, um, the schools that with the highest salaries, and these are real figures, um, Boulder was down the list. University of Colorado in Denver, the kids there were earning higher salaries than in Boulder. And salary, one of the top schools um, for um, salaries was Regis University, which how many of you are, you know, Kids are, you know, craving to go to Regis University, a Catholic university in Denver, right? So I think a lot of this perception that some schools are automatically going to give you better salaries is not true. Um, and then I looked at Texas, and I looked, I drilled down and looked at accounting majors in Texas, and I saw that the top accounting major, this, the kids making the top salary as new accountants, were from the University of Houston at Clear Lake. Now, who's ever heard of that school, right? So if you can have, you know, I think part of this, schools are banking on their prestige, are banking on their reputations, like, oh, yeah, of course they get the top salaries, right? Uh, maybe not. You know, I think Metro State in Denver was doing better than Boulder kids. So I really am excited about that this, we're finally going to get some meaningful data to show that, you know, some of the perceptions we have of who's making what, aren't true. Now, of course, with Santa Clara, I mean, schools that have a higher degree of engineers are going to make better salaries, you know. That's just the way it is. But then, of course, most students are not going to be engineers. And most students who go to big research universities to become engineers get washed out. So, um, that's, I don't know, that was a long answer to your question. <laughs> Anybody have any other? I can talk all night long, but I know that... <laughs> we got time. Last one. Okay. Well, you're, you're on the honor system, you know. I mean, you have to, they ask you, you're supposed to tell the truth, and the, and the forum will ask, you know, did you have any, you know, help paying for college? Um, it's, un, you know, so it's just, now, fin a certain percentage of financial aid forms are audited every year. So I guess that's it. Thank, Thank you. you.